All right, some sad news to pass along now. That uh, Russian ambassador to Turkey, Andrei Karlov, has died of wounds after being shot multiple times in Ankara, the, the uh, Turkish capital. Uh, we don't know who was behind this or whether this was part of a broader plot. We do know, and we're fortunate to have with us right now a, a, a good mind on the region here, former Deputy Secretary of State Ambassador John Negroponte. Uh, Secretary, uh, I know I'm just hitting you with this news, but of course it's not the first time we've seen friction between these two countries. This obviously ups the ante quite a bit here, but what, what, what do you see as the fallout? Well, first of all, my condolences to the family of uh, this ambassador and to the country of Russia. I'm, and I've lived long enough to know, know of at least half a dozen or so U.S. ambassadors who've been killed in cold blood uh, when they're carrying out their duties. It's a high-profile job. And they don't have the benefit of riding around in tanks or armored vehicles. Uh, they have a lot of exposure, and so I think that's extremely regrettable, and uh, it's something that shouldn't have happened. As far as the implications regarding uh, U.S., I mean, uh, Russian-Turkish uh, relations, well, we'll have to see if uh, what information can be developed about who carried out this uh, heinous act. Until then, it's a little bit hard to draw any particular conclusions. I understand. But, of course, you know, over the last year, sir, we've had incidents where, uh, uh, where there was an, a Russian plane shot down over Turkish territory, and then that led to some tension between the two countries. There have been other incidents involving uh, diplomats who've been uh, censored or ignored or thrown out of one country or the other. Um, the Russians have a a tense history with, with Turkey in general. Now, here we are just a few weeks away from President-elect Trump assuming office. Uh, he has been criticized for having too close ties with Russia and particularly with Vladimir Putin. Uh, any, any suggestions what our role should be in, in counseling these two nations and trying to take the, the octane out of this? What? Yeah, well, I mean, I say you've got to wait and see what the facts are. I understand your point about how, given the recent history, this could add an element of tension to Russian-Turkish relations, but uh, I think uh, they're going to have to wait and see. Speaking more broadly, I, I think that this, all these developments uh, raise the question of uh, what exactly is the Russia-U.S. relationship going to be? Uh, under our new presidency. What do you think and it think will that, be? What do you think it will well, be? I mean, uh, President Obama expressed some concern about that closeness between the president-elect and Vladimir Putin. He said that, uh, you know, when he heard that a third of Republicans like Putin, he said Ronald Reagan would be rolling in his grave. What did you make of that? Well, I don't think we're under any obligation to either like or dislike Mr. Putin. I think the question is what what is the best uh, uh, what is best for United States interests? And I would hope that this new administration will undertake very early uh, in its term of office a complete review of the United States-Russia relationship, in addition, of course, to looking into what happened during this uh, uh, election period with uh, cyber hacking and all of that. And, and I would agree with those who are proposing some kind of a commission. So we try to move this a little bit away from the headlines and a little more into analysis of what happened and what the implication what the implications are for future courses of action. Um, as someone who has served a variety of presidents, and, and you look at this one who is coming in without the typical foreign policy or experience type foreign policy team, we might be surprised should his choice for Secretary of State uh, be approved and, 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 and maybe you know, prove that he's up to, up to that. But there are some who are expressing concern that it might be a cabinet without the type of experience in these foreign policy matters. What do you think? Well, I think that's right. And I think the, uh, I think the learning curve uh, for President-elect Trump is going to be pretty steep. And I think you're right to comment uh, on the qualifications of the people who are, are entering, but uh, the Senate is going to have something to say about. But to me, it also suggests that they're going to need all the help they can get and I think they're going to have to learn uh, to rely a bit more on uh, the professional intelligence officers and diplomatic officers who have been, uh, at the moment, uh, up until now at least, a bit of an object of uh, scorn on their part. But I think they're going to grow to respect them. I remember Henry Kissinger coming in 
in 1969 and not thinking too highly of the Foreign Service. And by the time he ended his term as Secretary of State, all his top advisors in the State Department were career Foreign Service officers. So uh, they, they've got to get accustomed to working in this Washington environment. And I, I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, the evolution will uh, over time be positive. All right. Ambassador, thank you very, very much and for switching Neil. on these uh, sudden news developments. We appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much. Ambassador